everybody. My name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. I am going to make a card today with a new bundle. So before this one, I'm going to do three sneak peek projects right in a row. Um, so the next three tutorials that post, including this one, will um, be sneak peeks. If you go back one before this, then you will see all of it. Because um, I don't use all of the elements on every project. Um, so if you want to see everything that's a sneak peek, go back and watch the unboxing. It's a little bit late because um, I had to get my classes out. So the box came and it sat unopened. But I've opened it now and now we're going to use it. One of the reasons I want to use it is because right now Stampin' Up! has a joining special. So there's actually two joining specials. One, you can get the starter kit and become part of my team um, for 35% off or you can get 35% more in your kit if you um, join. And because demonstrators get to purchase things early, this is one of the options that you would have to fill your starter kit with. It. This is the Garden Meadow. I think it's probably a suite. It's going to be an online exclusive. So for customers, it beginning of November, I don't know the exact date, um, first, second, third, a week day around the start of November. I haven't looked at my calendar, but it'll be available to customers the beginning of November. So if you don't want to join my team, hang on for that. And then in November, and I'm, um, I haven't seen all of this stuff and I don't know that I will before this goes out. So I'm thinking this might be my online card club for November as well. So you can see this is the stamps. This paper is fabulous. That's why I want to use it for a card club because I have a million and one ideas. It is so pretty. It looks like, I think it was called oceanfront paper that we had a couple of years ago that was beach and lake and ocean. And maybe, I don't know what it was called. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, so this is beautiful paper. So I'm going to use the paper. I'm going to use the bundle. I'm not using the ribbon. I am going to use the embellishments and one of the other papers. So let's get started on it. If you're interested in joining my team, just go to my website, be on my email list, whatever. So I'm going to use this piece of paper. I almost switched papers, but I have to take my dad to get his hearing aids tested today. So I am... Um, kind of in a, not in a hurry, but you know, I need to get this done and out. And so I thought, well, if I change colors, I'm going to have to change all the colors. So I decided we'll just go. It's pretty. I just don't like using two of my same sheets of pre-order paper up. So this is watercolor cardstock. I've picked the three images that I am going to use. I wanted to use a, a lot more of them, but I didn't want to cover up the paper. That's why I want to use this in card club because possibilities are endless. So I've just mounted these on here like this because I'm going to trim them out with the dies. Um, so this way it's just faster to stamp it. When I stamp on watercolor cardstock, I'm using Memento. I always just let it hold a little bit longer, let the paper soak it in. It gets a better image. And when you put three stamps on one block, it gives a good stability. So there's no rocking. So that's nice. So now we have a nice image. And then there is a fence die cut. And then there is a fence that you can... Cut, uh, color and cut. So I'm going to do the color and cut on this one. And then when we get closer to November, I'll do another one and use the other. I'm just going to do these three sneak peeks because that takes almost a week of posting stuff. Um, and then I'm going to come back and do some more Christmas and fall. And then when this gets closer to November and it's time for this to be released, and there's more stuff coming too on online exclusives. So I'll do a couple more towards the end of the month. Maybe. I'll be in New York that last that last week of the month. I'm crazy. It's wedding weekend this weekend. So there, I've talked all through that enough time to soak it in. So then I just used this paper to be my um, color inspiration. And I am going to, this looks watercolored, right? It's just so pretty. I thought about running it through a dye. There's just so many things you can do with it. Um, so let's start. I'm going to use the water painter. I'm going to make sure it's clean. So I just have some paper towel here. It's just filled with water. I love these things. Let's start with our lightest color while I have it. Nice and clean. So see the flowers here are like pinks and purples. So I went with bubble bath, which is one of our new colors. I'm just going to add some bubble bath into my flowers. Just kind of dab it on. Again, I'm trying to mimic the look of the paper. Just add that. You could um, heat emboss this if you want. You could use stays on. 
I just used this because it was on my desk. <laughs> and then I'm going to do Highland Heather for my purple. Get some purple flowers over here. And I'm just dabbing that color on there. And then to clean my brush, I'm just gonna swipe it through my boots, my wellies. Okay, now let's go, let's do our fence. So for the fence, I have crumb cake and pecan pie. So I'm gonna do crumb cake as a bottom coat. I am just simply going to paint all of these little boards. So I'll fast forward this bit. Okay, so I've given it a nice little base of crumb cake and I am going to just take it now. I'm gonna add some to the ground that my little birds are walking on. And then I'm just gonna also add a base coat, of, base coat of crumb cake here. We'll probably come back and add some more, but that'll give it a little bit of a base coat. And then we're gonna use pecan pie. And I used pecan because um, the ribbon in this suite is pecan. So I wanted to match the ribbon and then it ended up that I didn't use the ribbon. So, but it's a brown fence. So for this, I am going to use it for my highlight color. So I've got the nice base of crumb, coat, crumb cake. So now I'm just gonna add pecan on parts. So there we go. Now I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of the pecan over here as well onto my birds. So on these smaller designs, I'm really just kind of dabbing the paintbrush, not so much even painting, just dabbing. Just to get some color on there and then let's get a little bit of that there. And then for this one, now that I'm changing colors, I'm just going to put it there. This doesn't take very long to paint because the images are so, so small. So let's do our um, flowers. So I have Shaded Spruce and Lost Lagoon. So I'm going to do my leaves in Lost Lagoon. Get the stems done. And then I'm gonna clean my brush off down here. And then I'm gonna to switch to shaded spruce. For my grass. And just inside these. have that. Again, the, the paper is so pretty and these are going to get covered up a little bit, which I know because I've already made the card. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on them. Now let's do the rest of these. So I'm going to start with the blueberry bushel and I didn't clean the spruce off because I left purple on here. I just want them to kind of be fun. So let's do the blueberry. And I want to be able to make sure that the boots stay two different tones. So I'm gonna keep my darks over to the edge. And I want that watercolor look. So I like that smudgy in there. Now let's get a little bit of the pretty peacock. tops of my boots be peacock. So the idea is to mix areas, but don't mix it all. And that'll give it some fun shading. And then just a little bit of Night of Navy just to kind of darken up any place where we feel like it needs to have that separation. 
When you add this much color to a small design like this, you need to make sure that the two images stay separate. So this gives all that fun color. That looks good. And then I'm just gonna take mine. I don't want it to be too blue. Get a little bit off. Eh, maybe I need it a little bit more. Let's go with some, I don't know what color I did it on my other ones. I think I might've done navy, but let's put a little bit of Lost Lagoon on our bird. Just gonna dab that on there and mix it. So I have, now oh, let's let this dry just a second and we'll cut this. So obviously, this is a beautiful piece of paper. I hate cutting it. Sometimes I wish the paper like this came already cut four inches so we didn't have to decide what side we're gonna um, lose. But because I have the fence, I decided to go for this part. So I need it to be four and a, I did a little bit over four and a quarter. I mean, a little bit over four, not quite here to be four and a quarter. So I did maybe like four and an eighth. So I'd have a tiny bit of border of card, but so I'd have a tiny bit more of my paper. And then on my other one, I trimmed off some of the bottom. On this one, I'm gonna do it opposite. I'm gonna trim off my top. And again, I'm gonna do it, um, so it's not five and a half. So I just have a tiny little border. Now let's just do five and a half. Let's just put it all on there. I may have done that last time. I can't just see my card. So we have this because it. I wanted to push my fence up a little bit more than what I had it on the other one, but I'd already cut the paper. So this time I'll do it separate. Now I'm going to use the, I don't even know what it's called, the arch die out of the set. Just kind of for some interest. So I'll show you that one and then I'll do the other ones. So just put this on here. And then it is going to cut two pieces out. It's gonna cut the arch out. They're both gonna have that fun stitching on them. I want it close to the top and in the center. Um, Cause again, our stuff's gonna all be down here. So put that up there. And then you don't want it, this part to go through speed bump. So twist it a little bit. And then it just takes one pass. Super easy. And it gives you this. So we have both. So if the paper wasn't so gloriously beautiful, like I thought about just putting this on and my images around, which kind of does, it makes me feel like when you go to Europe and you tour all the castles and the, the places and you look out the windows, you feel like you're looking out the window too. Italian countryside, English countryside, something. Um, you could also, if you want, flip it this way and give it that. Um, lots of ways to use it, but I didn't wanna lose any of the paper on this first one because it's kind of the star of the show for this. So we're just gonna put it together like that. I'm gonna grab my dies and cut these out. Okay, so we've, I've cut these out. And when you go to mount them on your card, you have all this white that's coming from someplace. I mean, the clouds up here kind of have white vanilla, but I didn't want these to look so starkly, oh, those are stamped on top of some beautiful paper. I wanted to kind of tie it in together. So there's a simple fix for that. I'm just going to go back and get my water painter and I'm gonna use Balmy Blue. And I'm gonna add a watercolor wash to it. So I want the blue to stay pretty light, but and you also don't want this to be terribly wet. And then just around the edges. Kind of take that stark white away. Makes a humongous difference on your cards. You do just want to be careful. You don't want to smear your images. The blue was easy because it had if it smeared, it was just gonna smear some blue into my balmy blue. All right, so those are done. Let's get the rest of this off of there. Now we just have to stick all this together. 
Well, I've got this out. This is the strip that I cut off of here, but I have my other one. Here it is. I don't want to... I'll go ahead and just use this one again. So the um, set has several greetings in it. I'm going to just use the happy birthday because, again, I don't want to cover up a lot of this stuff. Plus, we all need birthday cards, right? And I'm just going to stamp it on a little piece. of this, and then I'm just gonna hand trim it out. So we have the happy birthday. And I'll go back to that in a second when I'm ready to mount it on my card. So I have balmy blue. It kind of pulls all that blue into the card. And so that blue we just painted on kind of stretches through to the back. Let's mount our frame on first. I think on a, some of the other designs of paper, it would be much more obvious if you flipped them. This one is the same color. Some of them have like wood. Some of them have more of a painted background. So remember I did almost the full size of this. I just wanted a tiny bit of the balmy blue to poke out. And then I'm going to use dimensionals. And look, every time, <laughs> don't need a whole lot more adhesive but it looks like it is gone gone it only it only ever runs out when I'm filming like I've literally just made this card so why couldn't it have run out when I was doing the one you guys don't see well you'll see it in a second so I have my dimensionals on here this would be a good card to use the dimensional strips or the sh dimensional sheets and just pop this back in the middle. And then from the sides, people will see, like whoever you give it to, will kind of see the blue in there. You're not going to see it straight up on my thing. Let's start with our flowers. We'll see if I can get enough to just do. Nope. <laughs> Can't even get that. So what other adhesive do I have laying on the table? Seal Plus is kind of overkill for the card, but hey. I'm gonna slide this in here. And part of the reason I used the seal before was so I could move stuff around. So I'm not gonna to quite touch that just yet. Then this, that looks pretty good there. It's helped because I moved all this up. Before my other card, this is was all underneath my fence and I didn't like that. So for the fence, I'm going to add my adhesive at the top, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put one dimensional down there at the bottom. Although this is watercolor cardstock, so it's much more sturdy as far as moving itself. But that way that this part won't, even though it's higher than the other right here. See what I mean? So this touches up there with the adhesive, and then this is down here. So then let's grab our boots. Stick these in here. And then I had my birds, and they weren't, like, really fitting anywhere. So then I thought, well, I'm not going to use them. But they're so cute. Aren't they cute? So I decided I would just cut them apart. I almost cut them into threes. See what a difference it makes having the blue as opposed to the stark white? So just paint a tiny little bit on there. So we're gonna have mama and the one baby over here. Because I cut those, they have those tiny little points. I'm just gonna trim this off. See if I can get this on here. Got him. And we have our little guy following behind. Then let's grab our happy birthday. So if you're interested in my online card club, um, it's always hard when they have stuff that introduces the first of the month because it doesn't give you guys a lot of time to see it if I don't pick it until I see it because we haven't seen everything. So be watching for announcements about my card club because I'm not 100% sure that we'll use this set. I don't know if it's the only set that's gonna go with the paper, but sometimes we use two sets in Card Club. So I've just trimmed that out, and see, I like the way it gets the happy birthday on here, but it's not detracting from the paper. And then there's 
a new package of three colors of glimmer paper that match this. It, there's a spruce, the purple, and then a, a peachy one. I still haven't looked. Because it's online, I have to go back to our website to see what this stuff is called. So normally when you look down below these videos, it tells you like what I used. It's not gonna tell you on this one because there's no links yet. This adds just enough little sparkle and I don't mind hand trimming it because I like the, the organic feel to the card. I'm gonna do this a little bit longer on this side. And then I can make this have a little tail on it. There we go. I have ink all over my hands. I think it's for my stamp pads. Okay, a couple of them need to be washed off. So I'm just going to add this right through there. And then for the embellishments for this card, we have they'll be part of this um, online exclusives. It's adhesive backed dragonflies and birds. I was just going to add one because then I thought, no, you know, I like to put five to seven embellishments on a card. I didn't want to have it look like you were being swarmed by dragonflies or birds. So I did three. So two little dragonflies down here. We can go different directions. And then I put a bird up towards the top. Isn't that fun? Isn't this paper just not fabulous? So here's what I mean. I just shoved this up a little bit and see I got more of all of this. I lost almost all of my flowers because I did the, the paper lower. So just think about your paper before you cut it and where it's gonna end up. But super fun. So that's what I have for you. Come back and see the next two videos that have the bee and the furry animals. Those will be coming up next. Have a great weekend. Bye.